What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for this upcoming week, the second week of January in 2019. But before we do talk about that, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Estas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that feel free to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe follow me on instagram as well as on twitter and join our discord group chat as well as our facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box and let's get started with today's video talking about the overall indexes the dow jones the s p 500 and the nasdaq so we can get a better understanding of what's been going on in the markets and what we can expect for this upcoming week so starting off with the s p 500 guys ticker symbol spx <clears throat> Let's take a look at what this chart is telling us. So right off the bat, this past trading day on Friday, we had an 84-point day, 3.43%. Very strong day this past week, um, mostly due to the strong jobs report that we saw. 312,000 jobs added in December, I believe, as well as Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen. This whole meeting, the Fed meeting that we had last week, boosted up the stock stock market very nicely as well. So what do we notice in terms of this trend in the S&P 500? Well, we notice we're under a resistance point on this 50 simple moving average here on the 180 day uh, four hour chart guys. So, you know, these past couple of green days that we've been seeing, this has happened in the past in terms of these past couple of months of this correction that we've been seeing in the markets guys, right? This is why I've been preaching, you know, in the chat and in, in pretty much every single one of these videos that what we've been seeing does not really, you know, uh, point towards a market reversal to the upside, right? Because just because we've been having a couple green days in a row doesn't mean anything in terms of the stock market reversing. There's still a bunch of tensions with Trump and China. The economy's slowing down. Earnings are slowing down. So, you know, there's still a bunch of news out there, bad news that does have, you know, further effect to the downside on the market, in my personal opinion, right? And if we take a look, you know, over the past couple of weeks, We've seen similar situations like this, right, where we've had a couple of green days in a row followed by even more selling, right? A couple of green days followed by even more selling. So in my opinion, you know, this is what we're seeing right now, right? We've had a couple of green days in a row, you know, a couple of solid days, right? We've had a 700-point day in the Dow Jones. You know, we obviously had a 4.4%, nearly 4% day on the S&P 500. This past Friday, you know, we've had some volumes some push to the upside in the markets but this does not mean that we are breaking out of this resistance quite yet because we have not yet to do so right we have to wait and see what's going to happen under this resistance point guys because again this is a strong resistance in the past for the S&P 500, and I'm actually very interested to see, you know, are we going to break this resistance and test previous support levels, which are now new resistance levels at around 2620? You know, this is a very interesting spot for the S&P 500, but I personally think, guys, you know, once this good news dies down, this little hype that we've seen in the markets dies down, you know, in the next couple of days, I believe it's going to die down, you know, I think more selling is going going to come, you know, whether we get rejected here or we even if we break above this resistance point and if we get rejected, um, you know, and we get rejected by here, by this, this new resistance at around 2600, you know, I think there's going to be more selling, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's middle of this, this upcoming week, right, or the next of the, or, you know, the end of this upcoming week. You know, I think there's going to be more selling to come, right? I think there's definitely 100% um, you know more selling and if you if you agree drop a comment down below Let me know what you guys think about this. I would love to love to know so the S&P You know under a very strong resistance right now and if we're judging on the 20-day chart We can see the higher high, you know higher low pattern start to form of a reversal uptrend pattern But again guys, we've seen this happen, right? We can see it here We saw it in the past 
And, you know, we're under a resistance on the 20-day chart as well. So just keep an eye on all of these resistance points, guys, because, you know, we've had a couple of green days in a row, and it's bound to uh, for us to have, you know, excuse me, you know, a strong red day one of these days, right? So taking a look at the Dow Jones, very similar pattern on this 20-day. You know, we're at a point of resistance right now on the Dow Jones of around 23,500. This is a resistance stemming from about a year and a half ago, I believe from the sell-off that we saw last year in 2018 back in March and February. And we can see that right here, guys, right? The sell-off here brought us down to the support of around 23,500. We obviously broke that, making it a new resistance point right now. And that's exactly where we are in terms of the Dow Jones. And if we're taking a look at the 184-hour chart, we are at a resistance just like the S&P 500, right under the 50 simple moving average, um, you know, here on this time frame chart. And like I showed you guys on the 20-day, one-hour chart, we are forming sort of a double top right here. I mean, we did kind of break this resistance at around 23,390 to be exact. We're kind of at, you know, 23,430. So we're a little bit above that. So technically, you know, we did make a higher high in the Dow Jones, but we're not. You know, the uptrend over the past couple of days is not as um. You know, it's not as, uh, what's the word here? It's not as, uh, you know, extended as the S&P, right? Because this one made a clear higher high, while the Dow Jones is more of, you know, at a double top formation right now, just, you know, creeping, very slowly creeping above that resistance to make a higher high. But technically, guys, on a technical basis right now, you know, the Dow is still making higher highs, higher lows. The uptrend over the past five, six, seven trading days is still valid. So what is going to change, Um, you know, what is going to make this a break of pattern, right, uh, to the downside? Well, we're going to want to see a break below this point uh, right here at around 22,700, a break below this support here, and then obviously a break below this next support at around 22,300. And this is just going to make it, you know, this is going to make uh, the pattern of the Dow go from making higher highs to lower highs, meaning that, you know, it's going to be downtrending, it's going to be reversing to the downside. And this is something that I do think there's a lot of potential for, especially with the condition of the economy right now, you know, the trade war, every Everything that I was talking about in yesterday's video, um, you know, this video, and pretty much every video over the past couple of weeks, right? There's a bunch of uncertainty, a bunch of tension still in the market, and uh, that's why I'm really just approaching everything right now in terms of trading with caution. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ very quickly. The NASDAQ actually performed the best this past Friday out of the three major indexes. So this one was up 4.38%, up about 270 points. And just like the S&P guys, just like the Dow Jones, this one's out of resistance as well. Under the 180 simple moving average here on the 180 day four hour chart. And also notice this other resistance point that we see here at around $6,500. This was a previous support, and obviously when we break below previous supports, they become new resistance points, right? So we notice we're right there pretty much. We're at about 64.30 right now, about a 70 more points to go until we get to that resistance. But that resistance is going to put us right by, you know, right by uh, the 180 SMA resistance and obviously, you know, this resistance right here. So watch out for this, you know, uh, watch out for this area in the NASDAQ, guys. This is a strong rejection zone, uh, you know, based off of these technicals. So now that we looked at the, you know, overall markets, we have an understanding of where we could potentially be going, right? Let's take a look at some ETFs and stocks that I'm personally looking to trade for this upcoming week. So like I mentioned, guys, you know, the market seems to be at a rejection zone, right? So I am anticipating some selling off this upcoming week. Again, whether it be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, later on in this week, I do expect some selling to occur, right? Whether we get rejected, you know, at these resistance points or not, you know, I think we're going to be seeing some selling this week. 
And the first stock I'm honestly going to be looking to trade rather an ETF here is TVIX, guys. And TVIX, we've been trading this a bunch, guys. A bunch of people in our community trade this ETF. I trade it a couple of times per week on average over these past couple of months from this big correction or, you know, close to bear market that we've been seeing in the stock market, right? And, you know, how this ETF works is it goes up in price. Very simple. It goes up in price when the S&P is selling off. This one closely tracks the S&P 500. And, you know, obviously we've been seeing some crazy selling off in the markets, pushing this one up from about $24 all the way to nearly $90 from the beginning of October, and now since we've had those couple of green days in a row, like I said, you know, we've been selling off all the way to the $60 range, roughly the $59 range for TVIX, and what did that do, guys? That opened up about a 30% margin of profit. So keep an eye on this very strong resistance, um, you know, at around $60 or rather support rather not resistance guys. I messed up my words there. Um, keep an eye on this support right here, which was a previous resistance. You know, I know this is looking like a falling knife right now. It really is a falling knife in terms of this chart. So I wouldn't really be surprised you know, if we did break this support, I really wouldn't be surprised at all. But if we do break this support, guys, the next level for TVIX is going to be above this 180 SMA, probably around $55, $54, $56 roughly is where that bounce spot for TVIX would be on the 180 SMA. And, you know, I see tons of potential, guys, because, again, we've had a couple of green days in a row. I expect more selling. And if we do get more selling, we do get get that validation of more selling to come by getting rejected by those resistances that we talked about in the markets, you know, earlier on in this video, I think there's going to be tons of potential for TVIX. You know, we've seen this one fly 10, 15, 20% in a day. And if we do get one of those days that we sell off aggressively, right, which we've gotten many, many times over these past couple of weeks, TVIX is going to have a 10, 15, 20% day. And I'm honestly just waiting for that day to, uh, you know, cash in on some TVIX because, again, I've been trading this a bunch. I've been very successful trading this ETF over the past couple of weeks. And I'm just looking to capitalize on further downside in the market. So TVIX is the number one you know, ETF that I'm watching. And I'll also throw in SQQQ into this as well. This is another ETF. You can see it here, Ultra Pro Short ETF. Short meaning you're short on the markets, right? You think the markets are going to fall down. So it falls in the same category as TVIX, right, guys? Whenever, you know, the markets are going down in price, SQQQ is doing very well. So we notice on a technical basis right now, SQQQ is at a support support level on the 180 SMA, very strong support level, right? We see a bounce here, here, you know, we held above it here, here as well. And now we're right on it here on the 180 day four hour chart. And if we do see some selling off tomorrow, I do see tons of potential here because, you know, from the peak that we saw at $22 nearly, this one's down about 30%, just like TVIX. So if we see aggressive selling off in the markets, guys, we see the futures going down aggressively tomorrow let's say hypothetically right we see large caps selling off you know it might be a good idea to play this ETF as well as the previous one I showed you because both of them do well when the markets are selling off so another one I want to talk about in this video are the gold futures slash GC in particular JNUG guys JNUG ticker symbol JNUG is a bull ETF meaning that whenever gold is going up in price, JNUG is doing very well going up in price as well. And if you guys recall, in my video last week, I literally talked about this, is we saw a resistance on the gold futures at $1,300, and we were anticipating a pullback in those gold futures to get a better entry point on JNUG. And pretty much, guys, you know, judging off these charts, that's exactly what's, what's happening right now, and it's setting up perfectly to what I wanted it to do and according to my personal plan. So I'm actually looking to trade JNUG very closely this week, guys. And if we take a look at a larger-term chart here, 
here, we can see, you know, what is going on in terms of the gold futures here. So we got rejected by 1300, right? Obviously, like I just said, we're trading at around 1280 right now, 1285 on this nice little pullback. We're holding that 180 SMA on the 180 chart here, I believe, right? Or the 50 SMA rather. And, you know, I think there's potential if we do end up holding and, and you know, starting to push up back into the 1290s above this 50 SMA on the gold futures but then again guys we have to be careful because we are getting close to that 1300 resistance again right so what would make me be even more comfortable going long on gold and going long on jnug well you know first i would like to see a bounce here we're holding above here now above the 50 sma right and then eventually i would like to see a break out of that 1300 uh resistance right because we clearly got rejected by it so I would like to see a push back here and then test, you know, the next uh, resistance, which would be at this point around 1325. So I do expect gold, if they do break 1300 or if it does break 1300, rather, I do expect it to, you know, test 1325, which would be the next resistance. And obviously at that point, guys, if gold does make that move from 1300 to 1325, JNUG is going to be up pretty huge. And if we take a look at JNUG right now, it's at a resistance on this longer term one year, one day chart. But that really doesn't matter, guys, because again, you know, if gold futures do end up pushing up, um, you know, JNUG's no problem going to be getting out of that resistance. So let's take a look closer here at what's going on on this closer term chart on JNUG. So, you know, we are currently holding above a previous resistance, which is now a new support at around 980, right? So this is a good sign that gold is, or rather JNUG is consolidating here and looking to bounce off of this new resistance or this old resistance, which is now a new support, guys. So keep an eye on JNUG at the $10 range. You know, I think it does have potential to get to 11, maybe 1150 if gold futures do end up breaking that 1300 point. So keep an eye very closely on the gold futures, guys. I think they'll do very well. Well, um, you know, I think it's a very solid play in my personal opinion for this upcoming week. So another one I want to look at is crude oil. And there's two ETFs that trade on crude oil, one being UWT and another one being DWT. So crude oil right now is at a very interesting point. So we notice, you know, it found a bottom at $42. It broke that resistance of the 50 SMA, which, which has been a strong resistance over the past couple of weeks. Like we can see here, we got we had trouble breaking above it here. You know, we sold off to a lower low at this point in time. And now we broke out of that resistance, which is a good sign of a reversal. But we're still technically under the 180 simple moving average and, uh, you know, this one's still technically pointing down. So what am I looking for for crude oil right now? There's two different scenarios that I'm looking at, right, guys? If the whole entire market sells off this week, you know, typically crude oil sells off when the market is selling off aggressively, right? We noticed that, you know, by coincidence or not really coincidence, you know, they don't really correlate 100%, but they do, you know, kind of follow the market in a sense, right? We notice here in the beginning of October, we sold off aggressively from 77 all the way down to 42. Now we're seeing some push back up, you know, right under that 180 SMA again. And what are these two scenarios that I'm going to be thinking about doing here, right? Or what two trades am I looking to take based off of what these technicals are going to be telling me? Well, you know, if crude oil gets rejected here, which there is a pretty good possibility that it will, especially if the market starts selling off, well, I'm going to be trading DWT, which is pretty much shorting crude oil, going short on crude oil, and playing, you know, the, uh, the pullback on crude oil, right? Because when DWT is going up in price, Price, that's when crude oil is selling off. So this is what I'm going to be looking to trade if we do get rejected by that uh, resistance point. But let's say we break out of it, which is going to be a huge, huge reversal trend to the upside, right? 
I think UWT, which is the inverse to DWT, is going to be a very solid play. So we notice here, guys, that UWT has been getting crushed literally from 71 or 50 75 rather, all the way down to $7. It's literally lost more than five times its value. You know, there is potential here for the reversal of crude oil to the upside, in my personal opinion, guys. So it's always good to just keep an eye on both sides of the spectrum in terms of, you know, the bull ETF and the bear ETF, especially when we're at, you know, critical points right here like we are with crude oil. And that's really just the beauty of ETFs, right? You know, if the pattern is telling you <clears throat> that it could really go either way, well, that shouldn't bother you much because you honestly can trade both sides of the spectrum, right? That's why there's inverses. You can trade the bull side if it breaks out of here and starts pushing up, right? Or you can trade the bear side if we do get rejected here and start to push down, which again is a very likely scenario in my personal opinion. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of crude oil, guys. Mainly this upcoming week, I'm focusing mostly on crude oil <clears throat> and the gold futures as well as just the overall market, understanding where the market's heading, Futures, looking at the futures, looking at large cap stocks, pre-market hours to really determine what I'm going to be trading, right? So TVIX, I'm looking to trade that. SQQQ, again, looking to trade that as well. And in terms of these, you know, these inverse ETFs, guys, literally all of these, I'm looking to trade them with an emphasis on crude oil and the gold futures and another strategy i'm taking you know heading into this week is playing potentially playing put options on large cap stocks like apple facebook amazon netflix google and even microsoft potentially right because these are five or six right yes yeah, six stocks that have seen ridiculous push over the past couple of weeks since the market has been pushing up so if we do get that rejection you know, in the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, I might consider taking, um, you know, putting, placing some put options, you know, shorter term put options on, you know, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and other select stocks that I do see, you know, downside in. So I know a lot of you guys out there do trade options. I've been dabbling in options over the past couple of months, almost a year now. I've been studying, playing with a small account, kind of behind the scenes. And I do plan on making options content very soon on this channel. So stay tuned to that, guys. So that's pretty much it for this video. You know, just to wrap it up. I'm looking for downside in the market to capitalize on those ETFs that we talked about. But let's say, you know, if we do push up in the market, you know, I might consider taking some trades in some large cap stocks and some bull ETFs, you know, if the opposite of what I think is going to happen does happen. But again, guys, just do your own research, you know, really take time to study the charts analyze the charts, watch the futures, watch the pre-market movement, and you'll have more, you know, likeliness to succeed in the stock market. So please, please, please do your own research, guys. If you found value in this video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the love that you guys have been showing me on the channel and the Discord, every single social platform. I really, really appreciate it. Good luck tomorrow. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll catch you guys later.